Good morning, and welcome to Worship with Westside. It's Sunday, July the 12th, 2020. We begin this morning's worship by giving thanks to Cheryl Amy, Jason Teekle, and Amber Clark for the music. Uh, Cheryl, Amber, and Jason have used the internet and uh, an app that has brought their voices together even while they are apart, and I am very much looking forward to that. We thank Roger Egler for the scripture reading and Tara Gaskin for bringing all of this together. The session met last month, and a reminder to everyone that we've agreed to continue worshiping online for July and August with a goal of being back in the building and doing in-person worship services in September. Phase two of the garden on the south side of the building is looking good. Tara will put up a picture uh, of the recent plantings that have taken place there. Well, actually not recent, sorry, three weeks ago, uh, Roger, Sharon, John, and Sandra planted those boxwood shrubs. Now they're going to take a couple of years to mature, but they are a beautiful accent plant and will be easy to maintain. Basically, I'm just quoting uh, other gardeners. I don't know uh, anything about gardening, but I do know that the south side of the building is looking really nice. Bill Bind uh, from Knox Church in Preston has agreed to provide pastoral care for the next two weeks. Uh, the elders have his contact information. I am on vacation. Uh, for two weeks. We will be posting a worship service for July the 19th, and on July the 26th, we are inviting you to uh, go on to Facebook or to YouTube and, and explore some of the other uh, very interesting uh, and really uplifting worship services that are being posted these days. There's information on supporting the West Side Ministries at the end of this worship service. And I'm going to close on a, a personal note, if you will. I, uh, I was with the Shrubsell family uh, this week, uh, visiting with them uh, at the funeral home. Uh, Brother Mark provided the worship service to say goodbye uh, to Ab Shrubsell. Dennis's father, and uh, I, I must say, um, I'm at a bit of a loss of words to how to say this, I, I was uh, teary in the visitation room, and while it was a sad occasion, I recognized that some of that was simply seeing some of the church family in person, uh, Kim and Dennis and their extended family were there. And uh, I guess I was reminded again of just how much I'm missing everyone. So if I've forgotten to say that in recent weeks, my apologies. And I'll say it again. I miss everyone. And I look forward to when we can gather again as a worshiping and church family. And now, uh, one more announcement which we posted yesterday, and Tara will run that, and then we will gather in the sanctuary. Good afternoon. Several people have pointed out to me this week that the Ontario hair salons and barbershops have been open and serving customers for nearly a month now. And their gentle inquiry was, when was I going to get my hair cut? Now, it, admittedly, it is getting a little long and shaggy. I, I can see that. It has been almost four months since I had a haircut. In fact, by coincidence, I I took a selfie the last time I had my hair cut back in March. Tara, why, why don't you put that 
uh, that picture I took, uh, the selfie I took back in March. Just put that up on the screen. As you can see, I haven't aged well, but that's what a global pandemic can do to a person. So I, I acknowledge that the hair is getting long, but I must admit that for the last week or so, I've been toying with the idea of recreating the hairstyle I had in grade 11. Tara, could, could you put that picture up on the screen? This is a photograph from Georgetown District High School yearbook, uh, 1973, I think. Uh, that's my grade 11 yearbook photo. And as you can see, I had a hairstyle that was making a fashion statement. Or, well, it was making some kind of statement. And, and that's what I've been thinking about recreating the last few weeks. It's a dream I've had to see if I can grow my hair as long as I had it in high school. Not everybody is on side with this dream. And I've, I've considered giving up this dream for a good cause. So here's my proposal. If the friends and members and adherents of Westside Church are willing to pledge uh, $500 for the mission fund of Westside Church, I'll get a haircut. Uh, our mission fund supports local and international uh, charities. Locally, we support the Cambridge Food Bank, a Trinity Table, which provides lunchtime meals for, uh, for people. And we also, the, our international commitments include World Vision and pws &B. So this is money we raise to give away. I'm prepared to get a haircut for $500. I'm prepared to get a brush cut if we raise $1,000. So what I'm proposing is that you uh, send uh, an email to the church office. Uh, Tara will put the email address up on the screen or uh, phone the church and leave a message on the machine. Uh, that's 519-621-3630. Pledge any amount uh, via email or uh, on the phone, on the, on the uh, voicemail machine. And uh, just leave your name and how much you're willing uh, to pledge. And uh, we'll, we'll total it up. And if it's over 500, we're getting a haircut. And uh, if it's over 1,000, it'll be a brush cut. We will uh, record the haircut uh, when it happens. So we'd like to start this uh, tomorrow on Sunday, July the 12th, and I figure about three weeks. Uh, I'm away for two of those weeks, so we'll, uh, but there's still services and that kind of thing. Uh, from July the 12th to August the 2nd, we'll wrap it up on August the 2nd, uh, uh, figure out what the total is, and then uh, go from there. I hope to hear from you in the next couple of weeks. Words for gathering. God's word is made visible in Christ. In him we are rooted in truth. God's word is revealed through the Holy Spirit and lived out in our faithful response. Let's listen for God's word in this time of worship and receive words of life and hope. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are the light of the minds that know you, and you are the strength of those who serve you, and you are the rest 
of those who seek you. God of growth, you sow and you gather, you tend and you prune, you judge and you save. God in whom we live and move and have our being, in worship this morning we come and pause in your presence to rest from our work and responsibilities, to rest from our play and distractions, to rest from our fears and concerns. Receive our love and attention in this time of worship so that we may enjoy your attention to our lives in this world you love. God who watches over us, we confess it is easy to be distracted from your truth preoccupied with our own comfort, we neglect to stand up for those who suffer. Tempted by our own desires, we fail to protect the earth and respect its limits. In your mercy, give us wisdom to walk in your ways, the will to seek things that truly matter, and the grace to renew relationships with you and with one another. Amen. Our first praise song. taken from Genesis 25, verses 22 to 34. Rebekah, wife of Isaac, was pregnant with twins. The children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other. The elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle, so they named him Esau. Afterward, his brother came out, 
with his hand gripping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob. Isaac, the father, was 60 years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, let me eat for I am famished. And Jacob said, first sell me your birthright. Esau said, I'm about to die. What use is a birthright to me? And Jacob said, swear to me first. Esau swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. So says the word of our God and Father. Thank you, Roger, for that reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Early on in chapter 25 of Genesis, we're told that Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah. Verse 26 of Genesis 25 says that Isaac was 60 years old when the twins, Esau and Jacob, were born. For those 20 years, Isaac and Rebekah prayed for children. 20 years is a long time to keep praying for something that the passage of time does not make more likely to happen. 20 years of unanswered prayers before Rebekah conceives. After their prayers are answered and the miracle of conception occurs, it is not as though it's smooth sailing from then on. The twins struggle within her. It is a foreshadowing of the strife between these two sons. And it leads Rebecca to ask, if it is to be this way, why do I live? God answers, two nations are in your womb. One shall be stronger than the other. The elder shall serve the younger. This is not the norm for this time and this culture, the older being subordinate to the younger. Now we're not told whether Rebecca is satisfied with this answer. I'm prepared to speculate, and I don't often speculate uh, about gaps in a biblical story, about what might have been said or what might have happened, but today I am prepared to say that perhaps Rebecca's unrecorded response was similar to what you and I might have said or not said, similar to what we would say or not say in the face of family conflict. Family conflict is upsetting. It's disappointing. It's embarrassing. It is all these things and more. And, uh, and we might choose, even when it's pointed out to us, we might choose not to say anything, not to do anything. That might not be the right thing to say or do, but it might be what we say or not say. The story then moves to the birth of the twins. Esau born first with Jacob close behind, close enough to grab on to the heel of his older brother. This image of Jacob grabbing on 
is another foreshadow. In less than 15 verses, Jacob and Esau go from birth to being teenagers, yet not much changes in those verses or in the passing of those years. Jacob and Esau are very different in the womb, and they are very different from each other outside the womb. With this understanding, with this background of this family's dynamics, we come to the focus of today's readings. Esau sells his birthright for a bowl of Jacob's lentil stew. Now I know what it's like to make a good bowl of food. Uh, some of you may be aware, I, I can't remember the last time I mentioned it, that uh, for many years I was part of a chili cook-off team. We traveled the greater Brantford Cambridge circuit and in 2003 we won the coveted People's Choice Award for, for Chile. Uh, Tara will put up a, a picture of that trophy. You, you might have read about it in the paper. And, and now some of you may be saying, 2003, Mark, that, that's a long time ago. You're still not dining out on that story, are you? Well, no, no, I've, I've continued uh, to, uh, to enter other competitions. West Side, this church, holds an annual Super Bowl, that's S-O-U-P-E-R, Super Bowl contest in February, and in February of this year, although that seems like a long time ago now, in February of 2020, I placed in the top three of uh, winners that Sunday. And this is a, a photo of, of of the winners. Um, I think the fellow in the middle actually placed uh, first, but I was in the top three. A bowl of good food, chili, soup, stew, can be quite the enticing. And so we're told that Esau came in from the field and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, I am famished. Let me eat. Jacob said, first, sell me your birthright. Esau said, I am about to die. That, that seems like an exaggeration, but that's what he said. I am about to die, so of what use is a birthright to me? And Esau sells his birthright. To Jacob. Esau, as he tended to do, acted impulsively and without regard to consequences. The narrator of this passage does not hold back when they say Esau despised his birthright. Having said that about Esau, we also understand that Jacob is not portrayed in the most favorable of ways. Jacob is characterized as a trickster, deceiver, and we are certainly going to see him do that in next Sunday's reading and next Sunday's sermon. Not only his brother Esau, but also his father Isaac will be taken advantage of by the younger brother. But this morning we're dealing with this story and so we're left with the question, where does this ancient story fit into our lives in the modern world? Well, most of us still feel that we have to display to the world, and at least to those close to us, uh, neighbors, other family members, friends, colleagues, that we still feel the pressure to show that our family is normal, that everything is all right, it's fine. But when we are honest, at 
least when we're honest with ourselves, even if we're not with others, if we're honest with ourselves, we know that that's not always true about ourselves and about our families. And this is why I think this ancient story still fits today. Things can be awful, and they can be embarrassingly, and I know the word dysfunctional is, is a perfectly valid word. I, perhaps it's my nature, but I, I, I tend to use the word, or the phrase, not functioning well. Things can be awful and not functioning well in our lives, and in our families' lives, and yet God is still present. It is this story that makes a strong case for God's grace and presence, even within the messiness and conflict of family relationships, God is present. I really believe that at the heart of the stories in the book of Genesis is this truth. God does things, wonderful things, through the lives of the strangest and most awkward of families. When God looked out over the whole world to find the people that God could bless, with the privilege of being a blessing to others, God often chose what looks like the B team. Families and groups that are like families who don't even have the illusion of having their act together were commissioned uh, and, and called forth by God. to be helpful, to be compassionate, to be hopeful to others and for others. God chooses people, God chooses families, God chooses churches just like us. We don't have to be perfect and have everything figured out before God can visit us and bless us and invite us to be a blessing to others. If, if God can work with Rebecca and Isaac and Esau and Jacob, there is no doubt that God can work with us. Amen. And so be it.
our closing prayer. Let us pray. Tender and loving God, you formed the earth to be a place of joy and abundance for all your creatures, for food in all its variety and the people who grow it, transport it, and market it. We give you thanks. We pray for those who do not have enough food and for those whose agricultural supply is at risk through uh, extreme weather or uncertain prices or even social upheaval. Help us to care for the earth and its fruitfulness and for each other in our common need of its fruits. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, of all the nations we gather, people together in communities to care for each other and enjoy each other's company and creativity. And yet, this pandemic has revealed there are so many vulnerable people, so many places where resources are not shared fairly, where there is division, bring unity and peace with justice, where people are distracted, give wisdom to see what is important, where people are tired and anxious, bring strength and courage. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you call us to be communities held together by prayer and love for our neighbors. Where people mourn loss of any kind, provide comfort. Where there is illness and pain, bring healing. Where there is distress or discouragement, transform fear into hope. Loving God, we Lay before you now our personal concerns in this time of silence. Amen. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. Go in hope. In a few minutes or a few moments, you'll see a, some credits that follow this benediction uh, that give some uh, information with regards to supporting the mission and ministries of Westside.